Among the many clever and misleading defenses of our failing educational system is the assertion that our universities are among the highest rated in the world, and Americans consistently win a disproportionate number of Nobel Prizes. Both these claims are accurate and irrelevant. While Americans won the lion's share of Nobel Prizes in 1999, not one of these winners was actually born in the United States. If people born and raised elsewhere choose to come here and use their talents, fine, but do not claim their achievements as some vindication of the American educational system. On the contrary, the painful question must be faced. Why were a quarter of a billion native-born Americans unable to win a single Nobel Prize in 1999, when a relative handful of naturalized Americans won so many? This is not a vindication, but an indictment of our educational system. The top-rated American universities owe much to the generosity of American donors and the largesse of the American government, which enable them to attract top scholars from around the world. It is research, rather than teaching, which determines world rankings, and our well-financed Ph.D.-granting universities are unquestionably among the best at research. However, when you look at who gets degrees in what, again the picture is very disturbing as regards the track record of the schools and colleges that prepare students to enter these top-rated institutions. Less than half the Ph.D.s in engineering and mathematics awarded by American universities are received by Americans. Even more revealing, there is a systematic relationship between the difficulty of the subject and the percentage of American doctorates which go to Americans. In a mushy and undemanding field like education, more than four out of five of the doctorates go to Americans. It is when you start getting into the physical sciences that the proportion drops to barely half, and when you get into engineering and math that Americans become a minority among American university PhDs. Foreign graduate students predominate so heavily in difficult subjects that a common complaint across the country is that undergraduate math courses are being taught by people whose English is hard to understand, quite aside from the difficulty of learning the subject itself. Yes, our top universities are the cream of the crop. They are so good that people educated in American schools and colleges cannot hold their own with foreign students who go there. The period during which American public schools have had declining test scores has coincided with the period during which Americans were increasingly displaced by foreigners in the graduate programs of our top universities. In every field surveyed by the Council of Graduate Schools, the proportion of graduate degrees in the United States going to Americans has declined over a period of two decades, with the worst declines being in the more demanding subjects. A closer look at those Americans who do still hold their own in difficult fields is also revealing. Nearly 22% of all PhDs in engineering received by Americans are received by Asian Americans. Here is the group that is most out of step with the prevailing, easy-going education, with its emphasis on self-esteem and other mushy fads. Again, this is not a vindication, but an indictment of what is being done in our public schools. Ironically, people who go ballistic when minorities are underrepresented relative to their percentage of the population, whether among college degree recipients or in various professions, remain strangely silent when the whole American population is underrepresented among those receiving postgraduate degrees in science, math, and engineering in their own country. Such underrepresentation might be understandable if the United States were some third-world country just entering the world of modern science and technology. It is staggering in a country whose people led the world in such things in the recent past. Clearly something has gone very wrong in our educational system. Our current world leadership in science and technology, like our leadership in Nobel Prizes, owes much to people who never went through the dumbed-down education in American schools and colleges. Many come from countries which spend far less per pupil than we do, but get far better results for their money.